language does not have the capability of knowing what is the size of an array. In C language, when you write an array, you pass it to a function, that's it. You have to pass the size too. It's impossible to just pass an array to see what the size is. In C language, if you exceed the size of, the, of an array, you essentially crash your program. Okay? These are the things that, so I want a safe array, an array that doesn't crash and everything works properly. I want to have that array. And I'm going to go lightning fast through it because we have only almost half an hour to do it. Okay? So you will see how it's going to happen. First of all, it is an array. We talked about it. An array holds, uh, uh, is essentially a piece of memory with a pointer pointing to it. Now, the fact that we don't know what the size of an array is forces us to add another attribute to this class that is the size. So we're going to keep track of what is the size of an array. Therefore, our class, unlike regular arrays in C, will know what the size is. I'm going to create a constructor for the array that initializes it and puts this class of mine into a safe empty state. Unlike string, I can have an array that is empty and it's pointing to no elements. Therefore, I'm going to design it that way so it will be in a safe empty state. To do that, of course, I'm going to include the int array. And I will be implementing this in the namespace uh, SDDS. You, don't, you never, ever do stuff like this in a test or exam unless it, you've been asked to. OK? Don't do namespaces. Don't include stuff. Unless we ask you, you, your program must be compilable, which means you have to write everything. Don't waste your time. Just answer the question, OK? So int array is what I'm writing. And it's uh, the, the no argument constructor that I'm creating. I want to, uh, a question. You see it at the end of the class? Is it big enough? Are we good? I want to make it uh, one a bit smaller. Can you see this or is it too small? You can't? Bigger? <laughs> Is it okay? Can you see this? All right. Okay. So this is a no argument array. I, I want to initialize it and not set it. There is no reason for it. I just want to initialize it for the heck of it to learn that, to, to remember how do we initialize something in a class. Therefore, instead of in, in the body of the constructor, I'm going to put it in, in the initialization area. So essentially, I'm going to say m data will be set to null pointer. And m size will be set to zero. So the body of this thing will be empty. Pardon me? IPC 144, if you want to have a literal value for an unsigned integer, you put a u at the end. Right? So that's a literal uh, value for an unsigned integer. Okay, because we, a, si a size of an array cannot go negative. Therefore, I'm using an unsigned integer. You cannot have a th an array with minus 5 size. It doesn't make sense, right? That's why I'm uh, having everything as positive. So that's that. The next thing I need to do is, uh, what do I need to do? Um, the next thing that I need to do over here is to create a destructor. How do I create a destructor? A destructor is created by deleting the pointer that is pointing to the data. So I'm going to just delete m data. Do I need to set m data to null after? Do I need to set the size to zero after? No, it's the destructor. It is called when the object is destroyed. I don't care. The object's going to be gone, so I don't care. And this is the, let, let me just split the window so you see wh what we are implementing here. All right. Now, so down to this point, we have implemented this include and then using namespace sdds int main. 
return zero. And in here I'm saying int array, int array. I created an array, right? That's all I did. Now what I need to do, I want to be able to create an array like this. So I want to say int array b 10. If it was regular array, I should have said int b 10, correct? But because this is a constructor, I have to pass the size uh, through the argument of the, of the construct. So that's how I write it. I'm going to write integer b10, and I'm going to have an integer array created with size of 10. To do that, I go into array, unsigned, int size, and it's pretty simple and straightforward. All I need to do is to set the m data. to new int size, correct? That's all I need to do. But I want to set the size of the object too, so I'm going to set the object size at the same time. Okay? So it sets it and goes it, and that's it. So that's a constructor with the size, and that's it, and nothing else. Now, the next thing I need to do, so now this is, it, this is implemented too. The next thing I need to be able to do is to actually set this to another array, regular array that is coming. Like, I have an integer array. I want to build my dynamic integer out of a regular C integer array. How do I do that? I write a constructor for it. Because that one is a C array, I have to pass its size. It doesn't have any properties to pass it. So that's what I'm going to do. Again, I'm not reusing code or anything like that. As I mentioned in the other class, it's time for you to start getting my code, fiddle with it, and then rerun it, see how it works. Pieces and parts that you see, I have repeat, rep repetitive code, take it out and convert it to a function, run it to see if it works. Do it. Write the code yourself. Take the code, hack it, make it better, make it work properly, okay? so. I want to have, so it's essentially the same thing, so I need to first allocate enough memory for a size, but the, need, the next thing I need to do is to actually copy the whole thing into here, right? So to copy the whole thing into here, I have to go for i set to 0, integer i set to 0, i less than size, and now I have to set m data i to the array that is coming in. So I'm going to go m data i set to array i plus plus. And that's the copy. Okay? Anybody have any problem with that? Instead of writing in a body of the loop, I wrote it at the third one. You could, we could have done it like this too. We could have put this thing out and put a comma and then put I++ here. But why doing that? I want to make it as short as possible. So I'm just going to put it right over here. And I know it works perfectly because it happens after. So it's going to do the copying and it happens after, so we are good. So that's that. Now the copy. So now, now I, I have made this. So now I can actually do this. I can have integer b. I'm going to say c, 3 set to say 10, 20, and 30. Now I can actually create my int array. C capital, so I'm going to say int um, array C, and I'm going to set it to C and 3. So essentially this is what I created. So it creates a dynamic safe array out of that C array like that. Are we okay with this? All right. Next. This structure we created, uh, we created that one. Now I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to have int array um, x set to IAC. I want to be able to copy an array into another one. Okay? 
I want to be able to copy an array into another one. So what I need to do is to create a copy constructor. So I will do that. A copy constructor's signature is always the same and it will never change. It is the name of the class, scope resolution, name of the class again, constant name of the class reference. That's a copy constructor. Essentially what it does, it's exactly like the other constructor, but the difference would be it actually copies an already existing object. So instead of having m size is equal to size, it's going to set the m size to the ia dot m size. So essentially it sets the size of this to the size of what is copying. And then this is going to be m size and the data of my object will be set to data of AI uh, subjects so objects. So I'm going to go a i a dot m data and i plus plus. So same thing. That's the copy constructor. Are we okay with this? Any problem? So now copying can be done safely without any memory leak or anything like that. If any of these are vague, I'll bring up the slide and show you how the copying was done if you don't. You want that? The copying? Okay. So essentially what I have done, and it's a good idea, it's not going to hurt you, it's not going to bite, it's not going to be something bad. I, we have all the stuff over there, just take a look at it, it's good for your health. Just open it up and take a look at it. So. What happened over here is this. I have, uh, 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 this is copying, but I, what I did was uh, a copy constructed. This is assignment operator. So the difference, actually let me do the assignment operator, then I'll explain this. Let me do the assignment operator, then I, so assignment, so essentially to copy an object into another, I created the amount of space that it needs exactly to the size of the amount of space that the other object has, then I copied all the data into it. At any moment, if you have a copy constructor, you will need an assignment operator not to have memory leak because you want to be able to set an object to another after, it, after it's created. I want to be able to say B is set to X, just like that. The difference is that at line 7, IAC is getting, uh, sorry, at line 8, X is getting created out of IAC, which means X didn't exist, it doesn't have any memory, it doesn't have any properties, I'm just building it. At line 9, B already exists, it has 10 integers in it. Now I'm overwriting it with the integers of X, right? Because of that fact, I have to make sure that I do some house cleaning before I do all that. So the code of assignment operator is essentially or almost identical logic of it to a copy constructor, but the difference is that with an assignment operator, you already have an object and you are returning and you are returning the current object always out. So the first difference is return this. That's what you always do. This is the assignment operator. This is this one. I don't know why is it giving me error. Oh, because I put it to the wrong place, you bad boy. It's here. All right. So, so the main difference is that in the assignment operator, you, operator, you return this. The second difference for this one is that because the object already exists, you have to first wipe the data off. So the very first thing I need to do is to delete the data of the object. Now that the data of the object is deleted, I can do exactly what I have done in the copy constructor. And don't you dare calling the constructor here. You cannot do that. You cannot do this. People, this is wrong. Constructors are not functions. You cannot call them. Remember that. You can't call them. It's not a function.
if you don't know why, if you didn't understand that that creates a temporary nameless object and it dies immediately, if you don't understand it, memorize it. At any moment you see you are calling a constructor, do like that and don't do it, okay? If you want, if you have repetitive code, create a private function and call it in both of them. But essentially that's what you do, no difference. So. After, so essentially, when I have assignment operator, first I delete all the property the, of this function, of this uh, object, so the object becomes free of all property, then I'll copy everything else, which is exactly like the copy constructor, yes. One is copy, the other one is assignment. What is initialization? The other one is assignment. A copy constructor is created for initialization of an object with an object of the same type. An assignment oper operator is created to make it possible to assign an object to, an, to, a, to, a, to its same type. Okay? One is for initialization, the other is for assignment. And that shows you exactly what I mean. This is copy constructor, assignment at the moment of creation. This is assignment operator, assignment at not at the moment of creation after the moment of creation. That's the only difference, okay? There is another thing too. Uh, count for people's stupidity. Somebody may do this. Compiler won't give you an error because compiler first looks at the right side, and then looks at the left side, thumbs up, I'll do it. At right side I have uh, uh, a array at left side I have an array let me copy it so what happens it's got it comes to assignment operator deletes the data of X then tries to copy the data of X hence failing so self copying has to be prevented in the assignment operator we don't need to do that in a copy constructor because constructors are objects that are getting just now created they cannot get copied of, the, of themselves it's impossible but with assignment operator, the only way to find out if such a thing is happening is to check and see, okay, I am being assigned to another object. Let me see if I am at the exact same location of the other object. If that's the case, we are the same. I don't need to copy anything. If my address in memory is the same address of the IA that is coming in, then I don't do the copying. How do I find that out? I know that the address of the current object is kept in this. So I have to say if this is not equal to. So if the address of this object is not equal to the address of the object that I am getting the data from, then do the copying. Otherwise, don't do anything. Just let people uh, live with their stupidity. <laughs> Okay, so it's got to just skip the whole thing, no copying happens, and because an object is equal to itself, it's as if it's done. Pardon me? Exactly. Not, x equal x doesn't always, hap doesn't always happen as x equal x. Sometimes it happens like this. So you have int array reference r is set to x. So r and x are two names for the same object. And later you forget about that, and in your code you write r is set to x. And you have forgotten that r and x are the same. So line 12 is exactly like, it, like line 11. The difference is that that one is two reference to the same object, the other one is the same reference of the same object. We'll walk through it and we'll see. So that's that one. Now, how this thing happened, the good copying that I was talking about, this is how it happened. So I have the two objects, and I have their size. Then the assignment happens. For the assignment to happen, first I have to delete the target. The target over here is B. Because B is the target, I have to wipe it out. Therefore, the very first thing I need to do is to delete B. After I delete B, then I can actually allocate enough space to the size of A. So I'll allocate the enough, size, uh, uh, enough space to the size of A, then I'll start copying everything one by one from A to B. So everything gets copied one by one. After the copying is done, I update the size to make sure both they have the same uh, size, and voila, I have two objects and life is beautiful. So when the first one is dying, 
it kills its own stuff and removes its own stuff and no problem. And the second one is dying, the same thing happens and I'm not going to have any memory leak. Okay? So that's that one. Again, because we are creating an array and we want our, 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 our array to be smart, what we are going to do is to make sure that our array, we're going to make sure that our array actually know what is its size. So I'm going to have a function called size that returns the size of an array, size of the array. It's a very simple function. It simply returns int array size and it's a constant thing, and it returns the size. If I can type it, size. <laughs> okay, so it's returned the size like this. I can actually see what is the size of an array before I do anything. If I want to loop and show how the elements of the array, I can simply go by, the, by its size. Very simple and straightforward. Another good thing to do is to be able to actually see if our object is in a safe empty state or not. For that, we created a function called is empty, correct? Or set to empty. We had stuff like that. In here, I'm going to overload an operator for it, which means to check and see if actually something is valid to be printed, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write an if statement. I, I want to be able to say if or then for integer i set to 0, i less than r dot size, and i plus plus, c out. I'm going to show the elements of r. I don't know how yet, but I will show it. So I want when r is evaluated as, an, as a Boolean, I want to return its validity to see if it's valid or not. For that, I'm going to say whenever you find the need that this thing is needed to be casted to a Boolean, do such. What to do? I'm going to say if my object, if int array is casted as a Boolean, please make sure that m data is not equal to null ptr and send true for that so if m data is not null it's going to return true which means if r at line 13 of main if r over here invokes the operator boolean and returns true or false. What true or false? It returns true if m data is not equal to null pointer. It returns false if m data is equal to null pointer. Therefore, I can say over here in the else part, I can say r is invalid. Is empty. And how to print, actually, the value of what I have in R. Or let's put over here C, because it has 10, 20, and 30 in it. So I'll put C in here, OK? So in here, it's going to be C. And I'm going to need to have IO stream over here. And using namespace STD. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a method called element at. So it gives me the element a certain index. So I'm going to have over here uh, integer, and I'm going to return the reference of the element of the index that I want. So I'm going to simply return the element out, whatever the element is. So element at will return an element. How do I return it? Simple. I'm going to say return m data index. So if they say element at 0, it's going to return the element 0. If they say element at 1, 
it's going to return m data 1. Therefore, in here, I can go. Oh, that's a lowercase c. C, so in here I'm going to say C dot size, and in here I'm going to say C dot element at. C dot, something's wrong in here. Save everything. Did I make a boo-boo anywhere? I don't think so. I don't know why it's here to. Pardon me? Oh, 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 it's IAC. You're right, you're right, you're right. Thank you, thank you. IAC, thank you, IAC. So IAC size and IAC dot element hat. Thank you very much. I, so it's going to print them one by one with a space between them, and it's going to go to new line. So IAC is empty otherwise, okay? So what I can do over here to actually, to actually show everything, I want to put that in a display. So I'm going to say uh, void display int array. And in here I'm going to say, I'm going to put IAC so I don't have to retype everything. So I'm going to say um, uh, int array reference IAC. Let's make it a constant because we're just displaying it. Uh, for now, let it be like that. Okay, so X, I'm going to put that one over here. So now I can show... I can say which one is empty over here. I have IA, right? So I'm going to say display int array, I'm going to pass IA, and I'm going to say display, int array, I'm going to put IAC. IA over there is empty, and there, it's not set to anything, but IAC is actually set to values, right? So when I run this program three years later, I did the uh, destructor, right? Just wanted to make sure that I didn't do, have any bugs. There you go. So the first one, IAC, is empty. The second one is 10, 20, 30. So it actually shows the values one by one of the element of the thing that we have. Now, what I wanted to talk about over here was that to what, uh, what I want to actually, uh, uh, the thing that I did not teach is that the element at that I have written over here, you can actually overload an operator for that. The index operator that you see over here, it's essentially an operator that adds that many things to the address and goes to target of. We know that. If I say C C5, it means go five Cs after and give me the target. That's what it is. Essentially, any array means like that. You remember that asterisk pointer plus number in IPC 144, uh, pointer arithmetic. You remember that, right? Pointer arithmetic says that at the index is actually an operator, nothing but an operator. So I can actually write the exact same thing that I have written over here and make this an operator index. So the function is the same. The difference is that calling it will be much more beautiful. Instead of this ugly element at, I can simply say, so instead of doing this, I can simply say C out I A C and I put the index in here. It works exactly the same way, absolutely no difference. So it says I want to call the index operator of the object I A C. I go over there, the index operator passes the index and sends it out so I can get it like that. Now, the problem that I always had with this was that I exceed the size and, I, and, I, and I'm doomed after that, right? If I exceed the size of an array, it crashes on me. You can fix that in three seconds. How do you do it? You can say, okay, I have a question. What is 2 mod 5?
Okay. What is 5 divided by 2? No, 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 no. Doesn't matter. 5 divided by 2? Okay. What is that? That's 2 and 1 remainder, right? So 5 mod 2 is what? Is 1, correct? Now if you do it reverse, what is 2 mod 5? 2. What is 3 mod 5? 3. What is 4 mod 5? What is 5 mod 5? What is 6 mod 5? This is the size of your array. This is the index that the user is entering. By adding that, so I can simply say mod m size. And that's it. They cannot go off the limit of the array anymore. If they go, they're going to come back to the beginning. So if by mistake, if by mistake they print more, so let's actually put this one over here. So I'm going to put it separately over here. And in here, I'm going to say display up to 10. So I'm going to tell it to show 10 of them, right? So it's going to index is going to go higher. When in here, when it comes to the assignment operator, it's going to index. It's going to reach to 3. And when it passes 3, it's going to loop back and go back there. The remainder of a division is always one less than the size of the thing that is. And that's exactly the index that I like. So like this, all I'm going to see at the end of my program is for the thing to be repeated. It's not going to crash on me anymore. It's just going to keep going back. You follow what I'm saying? OK, so that's cool. cool. Nice. We can put that one for element at. So if they want element at something, let's, let's make it safe like that. But I'm going to do something even better for this one. Let's create a function called resize. What resize does, it resizes the size of an array. How does it do it? I have five minutes. How does it do it? It does it like this. To resize the size of an array, we're going to do this. So I have the data and size. The new size that I want to resize it to, I, I allocate that much memory and put it in a temporary pointer. Then I copy everything from the old one to the new one. And then I have all the information in the new one. I can delete the old one, update the size, make it 14. Then I can make the old pointer point to the new one. And then when everything goes, all the dust is saddled, I have a new size with my data. So I can resize my memory, right? I'm going to do that exact same thing over here. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to create a thing called resize void int array. Resize. And it gets unsigned integer new size. OK? So I'm going to do the exact same thing, integer pointer temp is set to new, what do I have? New int, how many? New size. Now I'm going to do the loop thingy to copy everything from the, from the, I'm going to do the loop thingy to copy everything from the old one to new one this size, this time. So I'm going to say copy everything from m data and put it into the temp i. So it goes up to m size. But wait a minute. What if I want to shrink the size of the array? What if new size is smaller than big size, the old size? Then it's going to crash, right? So what I can do is just add one more condition to my, to my loop. I'm going to say, go up to the point. Go up to the point that i is less than m, m size and i is less than new size, whichever comes first. So if i gets to new size or m size, any of them, the condition is going to stop and it's going to come out. So copying happens only that much. And after the copying is done and uh, done with it, all I need to do is to update the size. So I'm going to say m size is set to new size. Now I have everything set up. I need to get rid of the old data that I had, not to have memory leak. So I'm going to say delete the old data. 
Now the old data is gone. I have to make the old data to point to the new one that I just created. So I'm going to say M data is set to where temp is pointing, and I'm done. So I just resize the size of my, my, uh, uh, my memory, yes. You had 10 million integers to work with. You did. You finished your work. Now you have 200. You want to still keep 10 million things in your memory? Yeah. OK? So <clears throat> that's the resize. So now I have something that can resize the, the, the size of the array, correct? All I, can, all I need to do is to come to my index thingy, and I say, OK, if the user it go, goes out of the size, so if the index is greater than or equal to m size, right? Resize to, I don't know what's funny about this, but resize to index plus one. Make it bigger. So as soon as they ask for it, for something, uh, ask for any index out of, outside of my boundary, I'm going to make my array bigger. And it's going to work like a charm. There's absolutely no problem with that. OK, so oh, this operator not, let me uh, uh, do that one too. Operator not is essentially the exact same thing as the Boolean, but it's a request with the not. And by the way, these two operators that you see at line 45 and the other one, I'm, let me write it. So uh, Boolean int array operator not const is the exact opposite of the casting, so it returns m data being equal to null pointer. These two operators have been implemented for C in and C out. You don't need to say if C in dot fail. All you need to do is to say if not C in, it means if C in failed. If you want to see if C in was valid, you can say if C in. It means if C in is in a valid state. So I did the same thing for this one. Now. Now what I can do, let me save this. As 01brg.cpp. And I'm going to bring the test thingy that I have written in the other class. I think it was this one. Yeah, there you go. So what happens over here, I have int array IA, I have 10 in it. Uh, forget about this, we don't need it. We don't need these for now. So I have 10 integers over there. Then I'll set all of them from 100 to 1,000 over here, 10 of them, right? Then I'm going to show them one by one, and let's actually go with the size. So I'm going to say over here, I, uh, I A dot size. So it goes up to the size that it is and it starts printing. I resized it originally, but now we have the automation. So what happens is that in here, I go from I to 10. So in here, I'm starting from 10 to 20. So I'm going to keep going. The size of the object that I have is 10, but I'm going to keep adding to it. So now, if I run the program, you will see that the program runs the first one. I had 10. And as I started using more than 10, automatically it expands the size of the integer array, and it becomes bigger and bigger. Therefore, it becomes impossible for you to actually crash by going over the limit of your array. Any index you put. That's going to be it. So if I write something like this over here, if I write IA50 is set to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, if I do something like this and then I do a printout, 
get ready for this. You're going to see lots of garbage, but it's okay. I A dot size. If I actually write that, you will see that for the third line that is getting printed, it actually prints 50 of them. Oh, it's going too much. What did I do? Oh, I less than. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Control F5. There you go. So as you see, the first one is 10. The second one is 20. Then in this, after this, I have set the 50th one to a number. So it expands the size of the array to 50. Therefore, between 20 and 50, I have all garbage in it. There is an array, but there is garbage in it. And when I look at it, it's, it actually proves the same. So when I print everything, it goes up to 2,000, and then garbage, 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 and the last one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So as you see, now I have a dynamic array that can get copied, it can get uh, passed around by reference, by address, whatever, and it will never, ever cause any trouble with respect to memory allocation or anything. You want 10, it will be 10. You want 500, it will be 500. You want 2, it will be 2. You can change it to any size that you want. Are we OK with this? Hopefully. So that was hopefully the last time that I'm going to actually review stuff focusing on dynamic memory allocation, constructors, structs, and everything. So next time you're coming to class for lecture, we're going to dig into inheritance and stuff. OK? You have a week to, again, it's not beer drinking week. It's not partying week. It's not, I don't know, Aruba week. It's not Dominican Republic week. It's study break, OK? Who, who's, people go, believe me. I don't know. Anyways, I don't. I go to Woodbridge. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, anyways, so, so that's what happens. Okay, that'll be okay. So uh, study, uh, and hopefully we're going to have those two lectures set up, the review sessions, Q&A and review uh, online one uh, during the study break. I'll set an announcement for it, and uh, uh, we're going to be okay. Uh, any questions down to here? I put it on 30. What, it didn't ring. Hmm. What an alarm setting. Anyways, we are not late. Any questions down to here?